This nonfiction book is an informational text written by and photo developed by Robert Moss. The book is called Firefighters. In putting his book together, Robert Moss had tremendous cooperation from the fire department of the city of New York. What do firefighters do? They have many different jobs. Their most important job is fighting fires to save lives and property. They learn this job by going to school. They are taught by experienced firefighters. To be a firefighter, one of the first things to learn is how to use ladders for climbing. Firefighters also learn how to use ropes. They use ropes the way mountain climbers do. With a rope, firefighters can lower themselves down a wall. Firefighters in training learn all about the hoses they use to fight fires. They must practice the correct way to aim the nozzle. A fire hose shoots out water with great force. It takes skill to make sure the water goes where it is supposed to go. The hoses are attached to fire hydrants and then to the pumper truck. The pumper truck pumps the water from the hydrants into the hoses the firefighters use. These hoses are called lines. Controlling the amount of water that comes out of the line is an important job. Firefighters must learn to read the gauges on the pumper truck to know when to pump more or less water into the lines. It is a job that takes lots of practice. There are many special tools the firefighters must learn to use. One of these tools is called the jaws of life. It is a very powerful tool that can cut through metal. It can also be used to pry things open. When people are stuck in cars or buildings, this tool can help get them out. There are also simple tools a firefighter needs. One of the most important is an ax. Firefighters often need it to break through walls, ceilings, doors, and windows during a fire. All firefighters wear heavy coats and gloves when fighting fires. They also wear an unusual leather helmet. It protects them from water and from things that might fall from burning buildings. A flashlight and a doorstop come in very handy too. They are used so often that firefighters sometimes carry them on their helmets. Here's an example of a firefighter carrying a flashlight and a doorstop right on his helmet. Firefighters also wear special gear. They need to wear walkie-talkies to stay in touch with one another. They wear heat-resistant clothing because the fire is very hot. Often, a firefighter must carry a tank of air to breathe when there is a lot of smoke. Some firefighters receive special training. They may be assigned to a rescue unit. The firefighters in these units fight fires but also need special skills. For example, some are trained in diving to fight uh, ship or pier fires. Diving rescue units may also be called to help people who have boating or other water accidents. Teamwork is a very important part of learning to be a firefighter. Everyone must work together to save lives and put out fires. Firefighters at school march together to practice being part of a team. After several weeks, the firefighters' basic training is over. All firefighters must pass a test on what they have learned. Then the firefighters graduate. The new graduates are assigned to work with experienced firefighters at a fire station. Here, they will put their training into practice and learn even more from the experienced firefighters. There are many new jobs to learn at the fire station. All of the equipment the firefighters use must be kept in top shape. This means that repairs must be done as soon as anything goes wrong. New firefighters learn to maintain and repair their equipment. Tools and trucks are checked and serviced every day because everything must work 
perfectly when a fire or other emergency happens. Firefighters must also learn to check things outside of the fire station. They check all of the fire hydrants in the neighborhoods they serve and inspect buildings for fire safety. There are lots of other jobs around the fire station. Fires can break out at any time, so firefighters in many places must be at the fire station every day and every night. That means that the firefighters on duty must cook their own meals. When they go shopping for groceries, they must all go together. They take their walkie-talkies to keep in touch. If a fire starts somewhere, the firefighters will have to leave the grocery store in a hurry. There are often visitors at the fire station. School children sometimes come to learn about firefighting and fire prevention. When children can't come to the fire station, firefighters visit schools. They talk to classes about fire prevention and what to do in case of fire. Firefighters demonstrate how to do stop, drop, and roll. This is what you must do if your clothes catch on fire. Stop. Stop where you are. Don't run. Drop. Drop to the ground. Roll. Roll back and forth, protecting your face with your hands to smother the flames. Stop, drop, and roll. When all of the work has been done at the fire station, there are other things to do. Some firefighters may get a chance to read the paper. Some may exercise in order to keep in shape. There may be a dog to take care of, like this Dalmatian. Occasionally, firefighters may even try to sleep. But no matter what firefighters may be doing, they must always be ready, because sooner or later, usually when no one is expecting it, the alarm will ring. As soon as the alarm goes off, the firefighters must put on their firefighting gear and get to their trucks as fast as they can. Many fire stations have poles to help firefighters get downstairs. Poles are faster and safer than stairs. Everyone hurries. They know that the best way to control a fire is to get there as quickly as possible. Each firefighter has a special place on one of the trucks. As the engines pull out of the fire station, the firefighters check the equipment they will need. Some of the trucks need two drivers. One is in the front of the truck and one is at the back or tiller. The one in the back handles the rear wheels of the longest fire trucks. As soon as they arrive, the firefighters jump off the trucks and go to work. Each firefighter knows what to do. A fire chief is on hand to direct the firefight. Some of the firefighters must vent the roof. That means they must break a hole in the roof to release fire and smoke trapped in the building. That will make it easier to fight the fire and rescue people inside. Other firefighters have attached the lines to pumper trucks. They begin to aim streams of water at the flames. Some must enter the building to fight the fire from inside. Windows must sometimes be broken to let the smoke and heat out of the building. Firefighters carry tanks of air on their backs so they can breathe pure air when the smoke is very thick. The flames and smoke of the fire begin to disappear as the firefighters gain control of it. After a while, the fire appears to be over, but the firefighters' job is not over. They must carefully check the building to make sure that every bit of the fire is out. Finally, the fire is completely out. Struggling to put out a fire is exhausting work. Some of the firefighters must rest before they put their equipment back into the trucks. The firefighting team packs all of its tools and gear back into the trucks. Everything will be ready when the next fire occurs. The fire trucks return to the fire station. They back in 
so they will be ready to roll as soon as the alarm sounds again. The firefighters are happy to be back at the fire station. They are tired, but they are safe. Firefighting is very dangerous work. Sometimes firefighters lose their lives in fires. But the brave men and women who have died fighting fires are not forgotten. In almost every city and town, there is a monument to remember those who gave their lives trying to save others. At least once each year, firefighters get together to remember. In many places, firefighters also get together to take part in special parades. Firefighters wash and shine all of their trucks so they will look their very best on parade day. Then they get dressed in fresh uniforms. Firefighters love marching in parades with music and flags. So do future firefighters like these young people, future firefighters of the West Clinton Fire County. If you want to know more about what it might be like to have the life of a firefighter, here's a fun place you can go to. Sparky.org has things to learn about being a firefighter. Sparky's a traditional name for um, a dog who's a fire station dog. So sparky.org uh, will bring you here and you can learn about trucks, you can learn about um, the life of a firefighter. And it is sponsored by this group, the National Fire Protection Association. The man who put this book together is really a photographer. Robert Moss did uh, a dozen or so books, some of them fairly recently, uh, but his real calling in life is photojournalism. So this is his website. You can visit and look at some of the pictures he's taken of historical events and places around the world, and also the photographs that were in this book, Firefighters. Packed with information and pictures of what it takes to be a firefighter, this book has been Firefighters by Robert Moss.